Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News on iTunes and Stitcher, Dwyer Boxing News on TuneIn, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk light heavyweights. It's just been announced that Sergei Kovalev and Bernard Hopkins will be fighting in the fall. Understand there are going to be many points of view on this fight. I have not seen any posted odds. We're just talking about styles here. What I want people to do is consider the opinion of Darnell Boone, a guy who knocked down in different fights Sergei Kovalev, Andre Ward, and Adonis Stevenson. Right? He was asked about a possible matchup between Kovalev and Stevenson. Right? Two guys who he had decked. Right? He actually beat Stevenson the first time they fought. And what Darnell Boone said was the following. The question to him was, as we already touched on, you fought both Sergei Kovalev and Adonis Stevenson. Fight fans have begun clamoring for that explosive showdown at 175. If it happens, who do you foresee as the winner and how? Here was Darnell Boone's response. He said Kovalev because he's the more sound boxer. Both of them are strong and it's going to be whoever lands the shot first but I would go with Kovalev on that. They both have what it takes to knock each other out. Both of them are strong but the thing with Adonis is that he does the same thing in each fight. Paul with the jab, Paul with the jab, Paul with the jab. Left. He never really mixes it up. With Kovalev, he's throwing combinations. He's moving and punching off angles. Folks, in my opinion, that's the reason why Kovalev is going to beat Bernard Hopkins. Now, I'm a big Hopkins fan. Huge. He's one of my favorite fighters. As I've said here many times online, Hopkins, to me, is one of the dominant middleweight champions in history, right? The others being Carlos Bonzon and Marvelous Marvin Hagler, right? Let me give an asterisk to Sergio Martinez, whose career is ongoing, right? But this fight's going to be a light heavy. And the secret to Kovalev is that he has boxing skills. Right? One of the secrets to Hopkins, as he nears the half-century mark, is that his volume is way down. He doesn't throw a lot of volume. He's also a slow starter in fights. Now, I believe that Hopkins understands that Kovalev has very little experience going deep in fights. Right, he's a slugger who gets people out of there early, not late. Kovalev hasn't really had to focus on the scorecards because he's typically winning by KO. So on paper, I'm guessing Bernard's logic might be that if he can push this fight to the later rounds and just force Kovalev to use up his energy early in the fight, then Bernard can start to counterpunch and actually box a slugger. Here's the problem. Right, number one, Kovalev's trainer John David Jackson actually fought Bernard Hopkins. Let's just say Hopkins is not a mystery to Kovalev's corner. This is a rare fight where the fighter's trainer has actually already faced the opponent. Number two is that Kovalev has boxing skills. Bernard's not going to be able to come in and tie him up 
like he tied up Jean Pascal. Because Kovalev knows how to use an arm bar. You'll notice, and this tape was sent to me this morning, or at least the link to the fight. In Andre Durrell's fight from yesterday, you'll notice in the fourth round, his opponent comes in and starts to literally just put himself on Durrell's chest. Right? The opponent was so tired of getting outboxed in the middle of the ring that he decided he was going to smother Andre Durrell. Right? So he comes in and he's putting himself on Durrell's chest. So what Durrell does, and the ref doesn't like it, to give himself room is what I call an arm bar. He puts a hand up and he actually has the guy come into his forearm. That allows Durrell to prevent being smothered. Then Durrell changes his punch pattern a little bit. Rather than throwing hooks, right, and occasional jabs, he starts to throw uppercuts. They're real short, right? He moves the hook into an uppercut, right? So the guy comes in, Durrell starts hitting him with very short uppercuts. His opponent doesn't make it out of the round. Let's talk about Hopkins. What exactly is Hopkins going to do to survive against Kovalev? We know Kovalev can dodge a jab. He did so against Gabriel Campillo. Kovalev, unlike Gennady Golovkin, isn't front foot heavy. I know he knocks out a lot of people. But look at that Nathan Cleverly fight. Who was on the front foot in that fight? Isn't Kovalev a guy who is more patient than that? Isn't he a guy who actually walks around the ring? Kind of like Mike Tyson against Michael Spinks in 88. That one minute fight. Right? Tyson doesn't jump on Spinks. He just walks around the ring. Cutting off portions of the ring. Looking for openings. Bernard's not going to be able to come forward and smother him because Kovalev can put a hand up. Kovalev is extremely accurate. He's not a free swinger. He has high efficiency. So if Hopkins believes that he can force Kovalev to punch himself out like Ali got George Foreman to do in an earlier generation, he's going to be mistaken. Right? Kovalev's too efficient. He's not going to throw a lot of big punches that miss and stuff like that. He's simply not. Also, does Hopkins even work hard enough to force Kovalev to get tired? Isn't Hopkins going to try to fight the kind of fight he fought against Joe Calzaghe? Where he kind of is off at the side. He expects you to come find him. He's playing a cat and mouse game. If that happens, can't Kovalev go over there and just throw enough punches to win the round without really exerting himself? Right? He doesn't have to throw Calzaghe level volume, does he? Right? If Bernard's just over there trying to hide, can't Kovalev just walk over there patiently, look for openings, throw a few body shots, then back away? Why does Kovalev have to go for the early knockout? If the other fighter is giving away the early rounds and covering up defensively, Right, so my gut tells me that boxing's a young man's sport and that Kovalev is going to see the mistakes that Babu Chumanov made in a fight, quite frankly, that should have been winnable for Babu Chumanov. Right, I think Kovalev fights an intelligent fight. I think Kovalev doesn't try to hit a home run. He needs to just come in and hit singles. What he needs to avoid is having Bernard come in and try to smother him. 
right? Kovalev has exceptional balance. The secret to Kovalev's punching power is his balance. He's even keel, right? Kovalev needs to just keep his balance, not allow Bernard to come in and smother him, bank some body shots to slow Bernard down a bit, keep Bernard at arm's length, and understand that Bernard's game might be to force him to the later rounds. Keep in mind, Hopkins hasn't been knocked out for decades, right? Literally, you have to search through the archives to find a Segunder Mercado fight where Hopkins hits the canvas, or the Jean Pascal fight where Hopkins hits the canvas, right? You really have to go back several fights to see fights where Hopkins has hit the canvas, right? Kovalev needs to enter the ring with that knowledge, right? He needs to just enter the ring with the mindset that he's going to box for 12 rounds. If he does that and he can keep Hopkins off of him, and if he has the threat of violence, where if Hopkins decides to get aggressive with the boxing, he's able to then open up and throw his home run punches. I think the younger fighter wins this one. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Understand up until now, the guys who've given Hopkins a hard time in the ring are guys like Jermaine Taylor. Right, a guy who could hit you with the jab from halfway across the ring. Right, and it's guys like Joe Calzaghe, a guy who set such a murderous pace that Hopkins couldn't keep up. Hopkins had to resort to taking breathers in the fight, right? Taking the time provided him for alleged low blows that looked dubious, even on the replay, right, to pace himself through that fight. If I'm Kovalev, I don't come close to throwing a low blow on Bernard Hopkins, right? Hopkins might cover up and only give you his belt line. If I'm Kovalev, at that point, I'd just back away, right? Had George Foreman in the Rumble in the Jungle simply backed away from Ali when he was rope-a-doping on, uh, on the ropes, that fight may have turned out differently, right? Kovalev can't be suckered into throwing away all his stamina in the early rounds. If he paces himself, fights an intelligent fight, knowing that he has power in both hands, and if he can avoid having Hopkins turn the match into a wrestling match or a rope-a-dope match, I think the younger man wins this. My first take on this is to take Kovalev to win the fight. I'm not going to take Kovalev by KO simply because Hopkins is one of the hardest men in the sport to knock out. But I do think Kovalev has a chance to win this fight either by KO or by decision. So my first take, my initial take, is Kovalev by decision. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. I haven't seen posted odds. I'll be surprised if Kovalev is more than a 3-to-1 favorite. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.